Welcome to Daniel's Scrolls, the Bible book of Daniel in brief. In chapter 1, Daniel and others were selected to stand in the king's palace to learn Chaldean language. He and his three mates stood for God's principles and God blessed them. They ended up ten times brighter than all the wise men. In chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, only Daniel could tell the king together with the interpretation of it. That, of course, was given to Daniel by God. It actually saved all the lives of the wise men. All the prophecies in chapters 7 to 12 expand chapter 2 in greater detail, as shown in the illustration opposite. Chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar had a golden image made to defy God, and all but Daniel's three mates bowed to it. The king had them thrown into the fiery furnace, seven times hotter actually, and God delivered them. And then the king praised the God of heaven. Chapter 4, we see King Nebuchadnezzar Nezer had a second dream, and again, only Daniel could give the interpretation of it. A tree grew, and it was strong, and the height of it reached to heaven. It was cut down, and the stump remained. The king was to eat grass for seven years, and for seven years King Nebuchadnezzar was humbled before the world. Then his reason was restored, and looking up, in humility to the God of heaven, he recognized the divine hand in his chastisement. In a public proclamation, he acknowledged his guilt and the great mercy of God in his restoration. Chapter 5, Belshazzar, the last king of Babylon, had a feast. And he saw a man's hand right on the wall and he called for an interpretation of it. Again, only Daniel could, and it meant his kingdom was to be given to the Medes and Persians. That night, that Daniel regards you not, O King Darius, nor the decree that you have signed, said Daniel's enemies. The king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. In the morning the king came down, and Daniel spoke, My God has sent his angels to shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me. The king then set him free, and he made a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Chapter 11 expands chapter 2 again. We're going to go down to verse, halfway through verse 35 until the time of the end because it is still for the appointed time and that was in 1798 and the Pope was taken prisoner by France. 36. Then the king shall do according to his own will. Now, this can't be the papacy because it was not the will of the Pope to be taken prisoner. Rome was sacked by France, and he died there. This was the deadly wound of Revelation 13.3. Verse 40, it was Turkey, the Muslims, that came against France like a whirlwind, and the French returned home, and the Turks went to the glorious land, conquering down to all of Egypt in parts also of Europe. In verse 45, they occupy the Temple Mount. They still do. So, the prophetic history of Daniel. Well, his great time prophecies, as you can see, expanded right over to 1844. That was the prophetic time ended. And it covers the 1260 years, the 1290 years, 
the 1335 years, as in chapter 12. It starts, of course, at that time Michael shall stand up. Christ's work as our high priest was finished. The same as in Revelation 22.11. And in verse 13, God assures Daniel that he will be resurrected to see Jesus come in the clouds as we all hope to. The Lord's Messenger writes, especially should the book of Daniel and Revelation be brought before the people as the very book for this time. The book contains the messages which all need to read and understand. The interest in Daniel and the Revelation by Uriah Smith is to continue as long as probationary time shall last. And God used the author of this book as a channel through which to communicate light to direct minds to the truth. Shall we not appreciate this light, which points us to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our King? God bless you, friends.